All right. This is tutorial uh, nine. The Gears mod. Um, we were kind of going over stacker last one. I kind of ran out of time. Uh, last couple of things here were ghost all of the props, which would mean. Actually, you know what I think about it? I don't know if I've ever messed with that. I've been playing this game for a long time, and there's still settings that I've I've never messed with, never looked at. And these two, I don't think I've ever messed with. Oh, okay, okay. That's easy enough. That's just um. So if you want to see all the stacks, so I'm I'm set to 26, but you can only see one because it's not go Saul. So that's that's the difference between what that does. Um. Oh, whoa. Okay, I don't recommend ever having that one on because I have a GTX 1070, and that's making my frames freaking die. So unless you want to... Oh, look at that. That's like... I don't even know why that's an option. Why is that a thing? Holy... Yeah, anyway, so don't ever... <laughs> don't, don't do that one. Um, I'm sure that'll only screw with your games. Anyway, so that's a couple of that stuff. So that's Stacker. Very useful tool. When you're first starting out and you want to create some stuff, you know, put some props next to each other or create some very specific angles and stuff, that's a very, very useful tool. I, I love Stacker. But I've moved on to something called Precision Alignment. So this is probably something I'll never create a tutorial on because it is very, very complicated. And I tend to ramble anyway. So that, that will go way too long of a tutorial. Maybe someday, maybe when I get better at making these tutorials or something. Anyway. I digress, as some people say. If you get that reference, you're awesome. Anyway, uh, props for sizer. This is one that you won't ever see much. If you do see it, um, it just changes the size of the prop. Uh, one problem with this is it is very glitchy. So that changed the size right there. I just made it longer. Um, but not all props will recognize that it changed size. So if we take another prop and like run into it. Okay, this prop's doing it just fine. Probably because that's such a simple, simple prop. But when you get more complicated things and you prop resize, and I don't know, they honestly might have fixed this because I have, oh, they probably did fix it. Um, because I don't really mess with this tool much. Um, it can be glitchy. And if you're not careful, it can completely crash your game. So, it's useful, but be careful. Um, pretty simple, though. If you've got a prop and you want to make it bigger or smaller or whatever, you just change the XYZ scale. And if you don't know what XYZ means, it means um, the X direction, the Y direction, and then the Z direction. That's all XYZ means. Um, you can Google it if you need to know more. Um, just type in 3D XYZ scale or 3D XYZ or something like that. And you'll get more of an idea. Anyway, so I change this. If I change the X a lot higher, obviously makes it longer through the X axis of the prop. If I make this, you know, we'll just keep that and make this lower. So like a tenth that. Oh, it's teeny. It's skinny. Um, if I make everything ginormous, so it's going to be all ten times bigger. <laughs> well, that's how you can create some big props. Um, visual, I've never honestly seen this work. It's supposed to um, scale the visual aside from the physical. So if we get that same prop and we set... Oh, I wish this one had a reset so you can set everything back to normal, but it's done. All right, so if we uncheck that and change the visual... Look at that. Okay. So you're just going to scale it up, but it's not the physical props, or if you ever heard of the term hitbox of the prop, doesn't change. It just changes what it looks like. So that's what that'll do. But you generally, you know, there's no sense of that, so just keep that clicked. Um, preserves constraint location. So if you're doing it to something that's been welded or constraint of some way, it'll keep those constraints in the positions that they are. If you don't do that, and it could screw it up, and your prop could freak out and glitch out, whatever. So I'd recommend to keep um, keep that. Actually, I don't know if that's relative to... I don't know. I'm thinking too much. Um, but yeah. 
And then disable client physics. Would that just make it not work as far as physics? I don't even know what that means. Anyway, so that's proper sizer. Again, can you probably won't see it much, and if you do download it or go to a server that has it, um, it can be a little glitchy. Now that's something I should probably go over. If you download these, so say that you go and download Advanced Duplicator 2, like you should because it's freaking awesome, um, and you go into a server, and that server, it's not there, it's because that server doesn't have it downloaded. You have to have it downloaded, and the server has to have it downloaded. Well, you, well, that's not entirely true. The server just has to have it downloaded for it to be in here. Um, sometimes you both have to have it downloaded. Um, so that also indicates how um, oriented the server is. If you go into a server, it has, you know, in the weapons, it has none of these. It has none of this advanced stuff. It has, you know, no fading doors. It has none of that. That means it's a very basic server. They don't have a lot of stuff downloaded. And I honestly don't recommend them because those servers generally mean that their staff aren't good and the server itself is not that great. So if you go into a server and you find a lot of this kind of stuff, they're probably a pretty decent server. Know what they're doing. They've been around. They've seen, they've been around the block a few times. Anyway, I, I'm getting off topic here. So... Oh, that's the next thing. What's the next thing? And if you guys are enjoying these, and you want to get something more specific, you know, a tool that's more specific, or um, something more geared towards a, a certain idea or anything, let me know. Um, I may get into that. I may not. I'm just doing this as, you know, just seeing how, just to do it, just really. Um, but yeah, just let me know. Um, let's see. Dang. Let's get into a little bit more advanced now. Actually, no, let's go and go through all this stuff right here first. Um, okay, so everything we've been dealing with so far has been constraints, construction, um, and now we're going to get into posing. This has to do with ragdolls, and I don't honestly do this much because I don't see the point. I like to build contraptions and whatnot, and I don't really do this kind of stuff, but a lot of people do, so I might as well show it. Um, you can obviously put a ragdoll in a really weird position using your physics gun and freezing the uh, individual limbs. And I might as well tell you, um, when you see how I, I put it in the place that I did, and you can't move it, you know, it's like stuck, it's because these individual think the limbs are frozen. So I froze this forearm where it's at. So if I undo it, it'll unfreeze. Same with this one. And same with her head. That's how you undo it. Um, you can always do... Uh, work with me, Alex. <laughs> um... You can always press R, and it'll unfreeze the whole thing. This has to do with what I was talking about earlier, but the whole pressing R, R kind of undoes all the stuff associated with the tool. Um, but anyway, so I'll just go over a couple of real quick things. I'm not going to get too much detail of this, but uh, so first one, eye poser. I can barely even see her eyes because of the way she looks right now. In fact, actually, isn't there a face poser? Oh, there we go. Then I poser. Okay, so I poser is um, you can change which direction the eyes are looking. So say you want her to look off to her left, just just looking off to her left. You can't even see her pupils at that point though. Anyway, or to the right. Gosh, I am just putting way too extremes here. There we go. Anyway, so that's the eye poser. Really simple. You just click where you want the eyes to go. Face poser is very, very... <laughs> like, it's setting craziness. Like, look at all these settings. Um, you can randomize it to have them do really weird stuff. And then you can change the how extreme it does it. <laughs> so you can... I don't know why I don't mess with this more. It's honestly really funny. But, um... Oh, shoot. You know what? That's actually... But yeah, they have a couple of presets and whatnot, and I, I don't know if there's... Oh, wait. That's actually... Okay. So the first one's just blank. Um, and for some reason, I don't know if it's my game or what, but the mouth sideways is always kind of glitched out. Um, and so each individual slider will mess with some muscle in their face. So that's obviously closing the eyes. Ah, she's bleaking at me! 
Oh, her. So, pretty simple. That's all I'm going to really say about it. Uh, all you have to do is click the face you want to do and then pull up the, the menu again. It'll it'll mess with that face. If you don't have any face clicked, I don't even... Yeah, the, the menu is completely blank. It has nothing. So, click, and then the menu comes up. Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to remove them. Um, you know what? I'm also running out of time on this video. Wow! So, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and end it, and then I'll show you more about it here in a minute. Just go ahead and go on to the next tutorial. So, what, this was nine? I think. I forget again. Anyway, low attention span here. I'll see you in the next one.